In central London stands the distinguished Kensington Street, one of the most luxurious in the English capital and one of the most popular sites for billionaires, ambassadors, and aristocrats. However, what very few know is that this place hides a dark secret capable of freezing the blood of the bravest. There, at the time of World War II, there was a transit prison where German soldiers captured in battle were sent. At the time, this facility was a state secret, and the British government did everything possible to hide its existence from the public. Inside, the Germans lived one of the most terrible experiences of their lives, to the point where many begged their captors to give them the final blow to free them from so much pain. For years, the suffering they went through was little more than a rumor, but today, in this new episode of Military History, we'll tell you all about the London Cage, the English Secret Torture Center. But before we continue, we are very happy to tell you that this video is sponsored by Aura, an incredible tool that will help you protect all your data on the internet. It is not news that all our information is available to anyone on the internet, and that happens because there are brokers that are in charge of compiling all your information and selling it to other companies or people who request it to offer you something, spam you, or for even worse reasons. Aura will identify these brokers and remove all your private information. It will even remove you from spam and robocall lists. Aura also monitors your emails and passwords to see if they were involved in a data breach and exposed on the dark web and gives you recommendations on what to do. Plus, it has a VPN, password manager, credit monitoring, and just about every internet security tool you'll ever need, all in one app. You can register using my code, aura.com slash military history, or by scanning the QR on the screen, and try the application for two weeks, completely free of charge. Check how many brokers share your information and don't wait any longer to protect it. You can thank me later, I'll leave the links for you in the description and in the comments. And now, let's go on with today's video. By 1940, the Nazis had conquered Europe and were expanding across the entire continent. The Third Reich had occupied France and the Netherlands, and Britain was fighting for its survival. The situation was critical, hundreds of thousands of English soldiers were risking their lives to defend their homeland, and not a single day went by without news of the atrocities committed by the Nazis. It was in this context that the British government decided that it had to improve its intelligence service, particularly with regard to the interrogation of prisoners of war. For this reason, they authorized the opening of three detention centers on Kensington Street, one of the most exclusive in London, in buildings that had previously been opulent mansions for wealthy families. The entire operation was carried out under the strictest secrecy, and the three prisons were nicknamed the London Cage. The interrogation of Germans captured in battle was left to the hands of MI-19, an obscure branch of the British Directorate of Military Intelligence whose existence was unknown to the majority of the population. Its task was to extract information from Nazi soldiers and officers so that Great Britain would be aware of the latest plans, strategies and maneuvers of the Third Reich. At such crucial times, any seemingly trivial piece of information could completely change the scenario and give the English an unexpected advantage. On the other hand, when prisoners were suspected of having committed war crimes, MI-19 agents had to make them confess their crimes, so that they could later be tried and receive the corresponding punishment. Charged with directing and managing the London cage was Lt. Col. Alexander Scotland, an equally respected and feared military man whose tough guy reputation was widely known in the army. Scotland was born in England in 1882 and as a young man he went to South Africa to take part in the Anglo-Boer Wars, although he did not get to do so. While there, he came across an English officer who revealed to him that the key to success in the military was to collect intelligence from the enemy. From then on, and with only 22 years of age, Scotland decided to dedicate his life to espionage. He enlisted in the German Army of Africa in order to spy on them, and alerted the British to the tactics and weaponry used by the Germans in their African colonies. Ten years later, in 1914, he was discovered and imprisoned by the Germans for a year, until the English authorities negotiated his release. Upon his return, he was officially accepted into the intelligence service, where he launched a successful professional career. 
Lieutenant Colonel Scotland was a skilled interrogator convinced that the ends justified the means. For him, any method was valid when extracting information from a Nazi, even when it was necessary to resort to violence. He personally took care of training the prison staff, made up of 21 men. Every time a new batch of captives arrived at the cage, Scotland uttered a line from the Divine Comedy, Abandon hope all who enter here. The Nazis were cut off from the outside, there was no one to defend them and very soon they were subjected to a veritable hell. When they refused to speak, they were brutally beaten, with their heads smashed in with blows and kicks. Even when they cooperated, their hair was yanked, stripped naked, and forced to exercise without being able to rest, until they were completely exhausted. Sometimes the guards made the prisoners run in circles for hours, or made them stand still, without moving, for a whole day. They couldn't even go to the bathroom, and they were forced to urinate on themselves, on their own clothes, to humiliate them. The goal was to shatter their psyche, to the point where despair made them bow down to interrogators. Sometimes they were denied food and forbidden to sleep, to the point that some prisoners spent four days and nights without being able to close their eyes for more than a few seconds, since in doing so they were attacked with sticks. Of course, for those who complained about their treatment, things got worse, and physical violence escalated to the point where some begged to be killed. During the years that the London cage operated, an estimated 3,600 Germans were housed there, of whom 1,000 confessed to war crimes. This impressive number shows that Alexander Scotland's methods were brutal, but, in numbers at least, highly effective. One of the most famous cases was that of Lt. Col. Fritz Nachlein, a Nazi SS leader suspected of being responsible for the execution of 124 British soldiers who had surrendered in France. Nachlein was captured by the English, but defended himself against the accusation, claiming that he had not even been present at the time of the massacre. Things changed after a season in the London cage, where physical and psychological torture overcame Nachlein, who signed a paper where he confessed to his crimes. In 1948 he was tried in Germany for war crimes, found guilty, and sentenced to death by hanging. Many Nazis passing through Scotland's hands ended up speaking out, but later complained that they had been beaten, whipped, and starved. Some even said that they were threatened with blind surgery something that would end in the death of the patient. However, whenever the British lieutenant colonel and his men were called to testify, they denied the charges and claimed to have respected the prisoners' rights. The British government closed the London cage in 1948, when the war had ended and its existence was no longer justified. In 1957, Alexander Scotland published his memoirs as an intelligence officer. The original manuscript detailed the torture practiced on the Germans, but the British authorities censored all the parts that described the tortures. Almost half a century passed before a journalist, investigating a World War archive, found documents on the London cage and petitioned the government to declassify the information about it. In this way, in 2005, the human rights violations in English territory were made public. While this did not compare to the crimes of Nazism, it was a stain on the British army, which had always boasted that it had behaved according to the rules of war. Scotland was never sanctioned for torture because his actions were endorsed by the government, and he died in 1965, at the age of 82. We have reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, do you think the torture in the London cage was justified? Leave us your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.